All right, it's August. That means we are officially into the NHL offseason for 2021. Last year, in the 2020 offseason, before the bubble started after the pandemic hit and all that, we had ourselves a series that was one of my absolute favorites to do on the channel, and appeared to have been one of your favorites as well. It garnered so much discussion, so much fan interaction, and it's one that I am very happy to expand upon in this year's offseason too. Let's talk about the prospects of the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, and speak about them in a way that profiles where they were back then in 2019 and where they are today. One year later is moving over into two years later here, folks. And don't worry, we have ourselves an entire discussion to go about one year later from the guys from the 2020 draft. However, because 2020's draft was in October, it technically wouldn't really be one year later if we started making those videos now. But for the 2019 guys, two years later, hey, the draft in 2019 was in June. So two years down the line. Hey, it's already August of 2021. Two years later technically works here. One of the biggest, most notable prospects in terms of star power, potential, and pizzazz, not saying big as in the height, but big as in everything else from the 2019 NHL entry draft, was the 15th overall pick, Cole Caulfield. Let's talk today about how Caulfield went from a mid-round first pick to, dare I say, one of the most hyped-up Montreal Canadiens prospects ever? Like, no hyperbole here. I'm asking a legitimate question. Is this guy, in your memory, the most hyped-up Montreal Canadiens prospect relative to their draft slot ever? I don't care if he maxes out as a 20-goal, 40-point guy. I don't care what your own opinion is about his projection into the future. What I care about is the hype. How everybody, Montreal fans and non-Montreal fans, are reacting to this guy. Because in my own memory, which is quite limited, I'll say that, I wasn't around when Guy Lafleur was drafted first overall, or when Howie Morenz or Maurice Richard signed their contracts all those years, decades ago. But relative to their draft slot, is Cole Caulfield the most hyped-up Habs prospect you've ever seen? Because I think he just might be mine. Let's talk about Cole Caulfield, where he was two years ago, and where things are today. So... Going over back to the 2019 NHL entry draft, as we noted, Cole Caulfield was supposed to go somewhere maybe in the top 10, top 9, 8 of the draft. He was ranked 9th by TSN and Bob McKenzie, 9th by ISS Hockey. I remember seeing a whole bunch of scouts talking about how Caulfield could go as high as 5th overall to the LA Kings. And the reason for that is because back in 2018-19... Cole Caulfield was an absolute monster playing for a generational US NTDP team. 100 points in 64 games played, 72 goals, he was over a goal a game, and everybody was looking at this guy and his ability to put the puck in the net, and they were saying, wow, this guy is fantastic. His shooting ability, his instincts, he can shoot the puck where goalies are not. And when he doesn't have a shot, hey, guess what he can do? He can position himself nicely, dangle around a goalie or two, dangle around two or three guys, and then bury it by a goalie. When he's not on the puck, he just knows where to be to open himself up for scoring lanes. He played with Jack Hughes, and Jack Hughes was the guy that said, hey, I wouldn't have as many points as I did if I wasn't playing with Cole Caulfield. A lot of people were kind of looking at Caulfield and saying, wow, he was fantastic. But then you had the other crowd that said, oh yeah, sure, he had a lot of goals, but come on, he's playing with Jack Hughes. Of course he's going to get a lot of goals. And the two sides were conflicting back and forth, and there was a bigger piece of ammunition that the doubters would use in these conversations as well. The fact that back in the 2018-19 season, Cole Caulfield, despite breaking the NTDP goal record and tying Ovechkin's U18 scoring record was only five foot seven. But you had guys like Craig Button go out there and say, yeah, he's five foot seven. So what? He is fantastic still, and I'm gonna compare him to the top goal scorers we have seen in the NHL because he displays some of those similar skills. And as a result, despite the fact that some people said that based off of his profile, the statistics, the goals, the production, everything that he has accomplished on paper, this guy should have been, at the very least, a top 10 pick, he slipped all the way to 15, where the Montreal Canadiens, a team that we know they're not afraid to take small players, ended up taking this small but electric player. 
Fast forward to his draft plus one year, suiting up for the University of Wisconsin. Cole Caulfield goes out there, and he gets 36 points in 36 games played. 19 goals, 17 assists. We had a lot of people hyping him up because, oh, he is going to be a freshman out there. He's going to go and do all this stuff and break the records for freshmen and all that. Maybe break the goal record, too, because that's totally within reach. A lot of people were kind of labeling the expectations from the moon to... Let's just say a really deep hole down in the ground so far that it reaches to China. A lot of people were saying, yeah, he's only 5'7", he's not going to do well against men. Other people, Habs fans in particular, were like, yeah, who cares if he's small? He's going to go out there, he's going to show off why he's great. And he did that. In the one year later video we made a year ago, we spoke about the Wisconsin season and how it was really good seeing a guy stepping into the NCAA for the first time and being a point per game player. That is legitimately super, super impressive. He only had two points in five games at the World Juniors, though, which was a really big deal because he was an underage player going over to a team where they used him in bottom six minutes with grinders. Not really the best deployment out there, if you ask me, from the way that Caulfield could have been used. And so, okay. A year after being drafted, Caulfield went out there, he was a point per game in the NCAA, and Habs fans were still over the moon excited. But then we had Caulfield's comments himself. He said in the offseason, he wants to score a goal a game. He wants to score two points a game. He wants to win the Hobie Baker. We had all these comments made by Caulfield before the season even began, and we spoke about these in a video saying, yeah, you know, I love the confidence of this guy. I love the projection he's putting onto himself. I love the fact that he is aiming so high, and the way that he is, the way we've seen Caulfield in the interviews, he's a nice, cool, charming guy. We know that he feels in his heart that he can do it. He's not going to say this just because he's doing lip service out here. And guess what? Goal a game? He does that. Hopi Baker? He does that. We chronicled the entire 2020-2021 Cole Caulfield NCAA season on this YouTube channel. Every time this guy got like a multi-point game or whatever, we made videos talking about the individual points that he did, the performances he would put up on the weekend. We spoke about all of that throughout the year, and the videos are all available on the channel. And he ended off the season in 31 games played, with a whopping 30 goals, 52 points, unanimously the best player in the NCAA, despite only being 5... Well, he said 5'8", he said he grew an inch over the summer, but it's still listed on Elite Prospects as 5'7", so we'll say 5'7 for now, just because that's what it says statistically. Who cares? He went out there a goal a game, just under 2 points a game, he won the Hobie Baker as the best player in the NCAA. Caulfield had himself a year. The World Juniors this year were a little bit better to Caulfield, as he got 5 points in 7 games instead of 2 points in 5. Team USA won gold because Trevor Zagris decided to go sicko mode, and Caulfield eventually, at the end of everything, signed his entry-level contract before the start of the playoffs. He started off his pro career in the AHL with the Laval Rocket. Two games played, three goals, one assist for four points, right away showing that he could produce against men at a pro level, especially in the minor hockey league. He got the call up to Montreal, and things started to go a little bit differently. He played 10 regular season games with the Habs, had 4 goals, 1 assist for 5 points, and people were really harping on him because he didn't score in the first few games that he had with Montreal, and everybody was starting to say, okay, he's a bust, he's not scoring. Look at this, Habs fans. He was scoring in the NCAA, but he wasn't able to score in the NHL. What's going on with this guy, huh? He kind of sucks, eh? And uh, then he scored in overtime. Twice. Against Ottawa, a 3-2 overtime winner. Against Toronto, a 3-2 overtime winner. Even before that, though, you saw the flashes. You saw his mind was in the right place. He was making plays, but once in a while, he'd just be a little bit off in receiving a pass. You could see the gears turning in this guy's head like he knew what he was getting into. But before the NHL playoffs began, he just wasn't there at 100%. And then he got scratched. The start of the postseason wasn't good for the Habs young guys, as a lot of them were taken out of the lineup to kick things off. Eventually, when the Maple Leafs won a few games in a row, that's when Caulfield and Kotkaniemi were reinserted into the lineup. And guess what happens? Cole Caulfield goes out there, gets some very important points, some really big ones in overtime for crying out loud. The Canadians go to the finals off the backs of Philippe Deneau and Carey Price and Suzuki, and Cole Caulfield wraps up the playoffs with 12 points in 20 games played. He's under half a point a game as a 19, 20-year-old, 
and he hasn't even played his rookie year. Cole Caulfield, in 2021-2022, will be playing his rookie year for the Habs, and with the way things have gone, with Philippe Deneau gone and Thomas Tatar, I don't know if Thomas Tatar's gonna come back, who really knows? There will be an opportunity for a guy like Cole Caulfield to mesh with other players like Toffoli and Hoffman, some of the best pure goal scorers in the game, pick up their skills, and understand what it means to be an NHL-caliber sniper. Cole Caulfield, ladies and gentlemen, is extraordinarily hyped. And for good reason. Talk to me in the comments what you think about Cole Caulfield and his journey two years ago to now. I hope you enjoyed this video that rolls in 99. One year later is going to start up as well, even though the name might not be completely accurate. And bye.